Hi hey guys, welcome back to the next part of our series. Today we're going to continue with the character, but do not worry, this week I have something special prepared for everyone. So, just to get you guys uh, on board, uh, on Wednesday, remember, we're going to have our live stream, our monthly live stream, so make sure to tune in. It's going to be at uh, 10 p.m. Mexico time on Wednesday, and um, I think that's about probably like 8 a.m. or 10 a.m. on India time, uh, especially for our Indian um Students, if you want to tune in, it's going to be like roughly at about that time. And we're probably going to go for like an hour or two, depending on how uh, well um, the, the general thing goes. Uh, I'm also uh, in the last like finishing parts of the newest course, which I'm going to be uh, spoiling or giving you guys a sneak peek later down this week. And um, this week, we're also going to continue with the Lighthouse, one of the projects that you guys have been asking for. So I'm probably going to be like doing one day the character, one day in the Lighthouse. So we're going to do character and environment throughout the week. And if anything new comes in the industry, of course, you guys are going to be the first ones to know. It's been uh, like a couple of slow weeks uh, for the last couple of... Um, Probably like this month. This month was a slow month for, for industry news. Um, but yeah, if there's anything you guys want me to talk about, make sure to check uh, or give me your answers down here in the comments. And uh, before we jump onto the character, you know, we have our little promotion, our little like partnership with um, Skillshare. So here's the commercial. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just wanted to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. So there we go. I know some of my students are in vacation right now, so this will be like the perfect time to use your two weeks to get a free month on Skillshare and grab any of my courses or any of the other instructors' courses to uh, just like uh, get something really, really cool there. So this is where I left the character. I went on and I sculpted a little bit of extra detail on some of the other uh, vantages. I still need to like polish a little bit more here. So what I pretty much did this, I increased the resolution here on the Dynamesh, and then with my clay buildup, I just started adding this sort of like fibers right here. And since we have more uh, resolution on the Dynamesh, the, the amount of detail that we get, it's a lot better, and, uh, and it looks way, way nicer. Now, there's definitely some work that I'm gonna have to do on uh, the texture side of things later on when we hit the, the texture phase. We're gonna be jumping onto retopology really, really soon, and that's gonna be quite the ride because it's a really, really complex uh, shape, to be honest. Um, but yeah, we're going to be like painting some of the like very thin and small elements uh, later on, on the, on the texture side of things. And that's one of the things that I want to, to share with you guys. Uh, you don't need to, uh, like make sure everything looks perfect on the model, unless you're doing something like 3d printing. In those cases, since there's no textures and, and everything's on the model, then you definitely want to make sure that everything looks uh, as good as possible. We'll talk about 3d printing later on as well. So yeah, this is the, the general character. I really like how it's looking. As you can see, I turn off all of the colors because even though the colors like look good, uh, they, they can be a little bit distracting and, and you kind of lose or you might lose some um, um, perspective about the silhouette and the forms and stuff. So I want to make sure to focus on making sure that this character looks nice. Now, one advice that I always give my students is once you're in a good position with your character, make sure you you get your character or you can like line up your character in such a way that you know how it's going to look in game so let's imagine that this is going to be like a fire emblem game and it's like a tactical like three-quarter view like this is what you're going to be seeing so as you can see we really don't have to go like overboard on the details because this is probably as close as we're going to get to the character on the screen if this is a first person shooter then yeah we definitely need to bring this like quite higher but i'm imagining this is going to be like a world of warcraft thing so probably the biggest i'm going to see this guy is about here so this is the level of detail i would i would be focusing on for the character and that way we can save of course a little bit of time now on the concept though we are missing the spikes this one's right here the sort of like bony spiky protrusions as you can see like all over the the, the spheres um so let's get them let's get them in there let me, I'm going to have this one. I'm not going to use pure ref today. I'm just going to move it to the side. And uh, yeah, let's go. So I'm actually going to start with a cylinder over here. I'm going to say make poly mesh 3D. I'm going to press R to go into scale mode. And by the way, let me turn on Karnak so we can see everything. And I'm going to scale this guys up. There we go. 
Now, there's a couple of brushes that I really, really like. They're relatively new. They got introduced in 2021.3, I believe, which are called the knife brushes. So you press Control Shift and click here, and you're going to select this knife lasso or knife curve. And the knife, what it does is it ba basically like breaks or cuts away whatever piece of geometry you are selecting. And you can press Tap or Alt, sorry, and you can create like a nice little curve. So, for instance, here... I can start creating the shape of the of the little like uh, like horn or we not horn like spike, and it's gonna give me a little bit of a of a nicer effect. I'm gonna create dynamesh right here, and I'm gonna use my trim dynamic, which I love as well. BTD. Let's turn uh, symmetry on for just a second, and we're gonna start just like pushing the form a little bit closer. Now it's not symmetrical because the cuts that I did were not symmetrical, but it's like pretty close. So we're gonna. Just start creating this sort of like nice fang horn looking shape. And then I'm going to use my move brush and we're just going to push this in like this. Now, the smaller we make the brush, the sharper this thing is going to be. And I do want this thing to be like quite, quite sharp. As you can see, I'm leaving this sort of like faceted bevelly look because it's supposed to be a little bit more stylized. So that's why I really like the, the trim dynamic because it gives me this sort of like broken down uh, effect on the general thing. There we go. I'm going to use my move brush and I definitely want to give it a little bit more curvature. And that's it. Now, here's a tip for you guys. If you're working on a game and you want things to be as uh, like, let's call them as um, uniform as possible. You want the artistic direction of the thing to be as... as um, yeah, as uniform as possible. You probably want to have uh, like a couple of these guys, and you're going to be using them quite a bit in, in characters. So the best thing we can do is create a brush that's going to save like several of these spikes. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We've done this before, but like, we're going to do it a little bit more nicely today. So I'm going to rotate this guy around so that it's facing me. So 90 degrees. There we go. And I'm going to go to my brushes, and I'm going to say create insert mesh. I'm going to create a new mesh, and there we go. So now... If we were to go here with this insert mesh, as you can see, we can insert these horns like everywhere. Cool, right? Well, that's not the end of it. And uh, you're going to be glad you stayed for this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my cut tool again. I'm going to create a variation of this one. So I'm going to use knife curve and let's do like a like a broken down fang right here. And I'm going to get rid of a symmetry and let's bevel this like corner over here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the front view, to this one. I'm going to select the brush that we just created, which is this insert mesh brush. And then I'm going to press B and I'm going to say create insert mesh and I'm going to append. What that will do is now when I use this insert brush, I can select which one of the two horns I want to insert. Now I'm going to hit control C a couple of times. I'm going to go back here and now I'm going to do like another one, but this one's going to be like, um, let's use... I'm going to use Alt. I'm just going to like get rid of a, like a little bit of a, of a bit right there. It's Dynamesh. And then again, so it's just like a, like a little bit of a fragmented spike, right? Like it got like a hit or something. And we got this sort of like effect. It's Dynamesh. Soften it up a little bit. And there we go. So now we got like a damage spike, right? Like this. There we go. Do the same thing. Push this forward. Go back to the same brush, the insert mesh brush, this one right here, and I'm gonna press um, B again. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna say create insert mesh, and I'm gonna hit append. So now I'm gonna hit OK. Now we have three elements right here, and at any, at any point I can switch between them, which is just amazing. And one thing that I can do, which is uh, really handy, is of course I can go B and I can save this brush. So if I save this brush, I can just bring it to, I don't know, let's go to our assets folder and just call this like stylized horns and there we go so now every time we want we can just load this brush in and use this one for any of our projects if you guys want this brush let me know and i'll uh, i'll throw a link uh, to you guys so that you can get it and uh, at this point i'm going to append a new sphere which is going to be like a placeholder sphere let's go to this sphere I'm going to turn on transparency to see where it is. There we go. So it's just a placeholder. Let's turn this off. 
And with this new element selected, if I take a look, we have the first horn right here. So I can just like drag and drop. And there we go. Now it's just a matter of like modifying and moving this so that it follows the shape that we want to have. Right about there. Now we have another one like over here. So we just draw one and rotate it around so that it lands right where we need it, which is right about there. And then we draw another one. Same deal. We just like get it in there. And then, for instance, we can change to like a small, like hollow one, or like the the missing point one, and just get it in there like that. We're probably gonna have to rebuild a little bit of the, um, of like the tendrils and stuff, so that these things look a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, this is a very, very easy and quick way to add variation to your characters without having to sculpt every single like piece as a separate uh, a separate element. So let's bring it that there. There we go. Oop. Let's grab the other one. Mm, from the reference, I'm just missing one right here. There we go. And then we're going to have to imagine what's going on back here. So probably one there. Probably like a couple over here. They're all pointing up. So I'm going to make sure to point them up. Let's add one more here. And that's it. Now, the reason why it's very important that we align them up to the camera when we are creating the brushes is so that when we draw them on top of this guy, as you saw there, it's uh, it, it just follows things a little bit like nicer. Uh, I'll probably add one like small one like right here. There we go. And that's it. That's how you create like spikes in the, what was that? Like five or 10 minutes. So uh, yeah, now I think we're in a really good position. I, I think we do need claws though. Uh, he's looking a little bit weird without uh, claws. So I'm gonna show you very quickly how to do that. And I'm gonna use masks. So I am gonna like mask the area where I would expect the claws to be. Or the nails. And uh, we're actually going to extract them. So I'm going to say geometry, extract, or sorry, subtool, and then extract. I'm just going to hit extract. As you can see, that's a little bit too much thickness. I'm going to say 0 0.01, hit extract, and hit accept. And we get this. So those are looking good. I like them. However, uh, if you take a look at your nails, you're going to see that the root of the nail, they usually go like uh, closer to the skin. So we're going to just push this guys a little bit in. I'm going to smooth them as well. I think they're a little bit too like sharp. So let's smooth them and just push them in. We, of course, have symmetry turn on. There we go. Now we can go back to the to the body. The body definitely needs a little bit more geometry. As you can see, now we've, we've kind of like hit a plateau there. So I'm going to increase the resolution here with the Dynamesh. There we go. And that's gonna allow me to like sculpt the like the border of the of the skins. I have a guilty pleasure uh, that I'm gonna share with you guys. I love watching uh, videos of people getting like their nails fixed when they get like ingrown nails and they do like this like surgery and uh, and all of the infection comes out. I don't know, I, I just find them fascinating. <laughs> Um, so we're doing this sort of like ingrown nails right here. So a little bit of like that sort of, uh, meaty stuff. It, it, it's really disgusting, but it's, uh, I don't know. It's really fun. There's a lot of those videos in like, uh, Instagram and, and TikTok. So yeah, Reddit as well. There we go. That's the final one here. Now, uh, remember we've talked about this before. Anytime we change the silhouette of a character, we're gonna have a change in the in the amount of polygons that we need to capture that silhouette. So that's definitely gonna increase the polycam. But as you can see, that makes it look way way nicer. Uh, we're missing the navel. Very important. So let's go to the body and let's add a little like navel there. I'm gonna add like a little bit of a, of a fold on top of the navel. Smooth it out. There we go. 
it's those little details, you know, that there's a famous quote that says the devils and the details, right? So it's those little things that uh, can really uh, change the way things look. Now, I'm not sure, I I've been thinking about this, I'm not sure about adding like details to the spheres, like small like variations. I kind of like the like super clean spheres. Um, I, I was once in a um, in a lecture with a, a very famous guy called uh, Furio Tedeschi. Some of you guys probably know him. He's like a master of uh, of like uh, robots. He's really really good. And uh, I don't remember which specific piece he was like presenting, but it was one of like I think it was it was this. I'm pretty sure it was this or one of these guys. And uh, one of the design principles that he mentioned was something called rest areas. So whenever you're designing something or whenever you have something created, you want to have areas where things are easy for the eye to process. If you have something that's super, super busy, super, super complex, it becomes just noise to the brain. It doesn't have enough time to analyze and understand what's going on. So what he did here and with most of his stuff is he would have like really flat, nice, sharp areas and then a lot of like intricate details and stuff all over the place. And that way, when you're like seeing or studying this image, you, you can see uh, certain things are more advanced and certain things are more simple. And, and that makes it a lot easier to process. So that's why I'm really inclined to keep this spheres like soft, even though there is a little bit of detail on the, um, what's the word, on the, on the concept. I think we can get that detail on the color side of things and not on the sculpture. And that's, uh, that's what's going to be, uh, that's what we're going to be using for the, for the whole thing. So, yeah, I mean, with that done, we were pretty much ready to bring this guy into Maya and do the retopology process. Uh, there's a couple of new things that Maya introduced for retopology in, in Maya 2023. And uh, I, I kind of want to give it a shot, like uh, use like the automatic uh, retopology tool and see how far along we can get the, the surface before we go in and, and like do some like modification. Uh, but yeah, this is this is the, the final thing. I'm going to add like a couple of like big stripes here and there just to again break up the surface a little bit more um but I'm, I'm really liking how this character turned out in the in the sculpting department so i'm gonna stop the video right here guys i'm just gonna do a quick decimation well actually let me show you that because it's a that's a cool process well the first thing i, I want to do here is i actually want to like merge everything because when we did the duplication of the character for this thing uh we we had like a lot of extra geometry so one thing we can do is we can actually adjust like a uh, boolean mesh everything into a single piece. But now that I think of it, it might not be the best idea because it might be a little bit complicated to do so. Now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do a, a single uh, mesh. So I'm just gonna go here sub tool, I'm gonna say merge and merge visible. This is gonna combine all of the pieces in a single element. It's 4.9 million polygons, so that's about or points, that's about like 10 million polygons. Uh, and I'm gonna say C plugin. Subtool master, sorry, sorry, decimation master. And we're gonna do this uh, 250K or even the 150K like preset. What this should do is it should bring this sculpture to 150K. That does not mean that that's gonna be our final sculpture or the final high poly uh, for the bakes and stuff. We're gonna have a different one, but it is gonna be the one that we're gonna be using for the retopology because the, the lower the amount of polygons that we have, the easier it's gonna be for Maya to, to process the whole thing. So let's just wait for this to finish. Well, that's uh, finishing. Well, as soon as that finish, I also need to save this one real quick to make sure that we, of course, have a um, a basic uh, like shape. Let's wait. Let's wait. Two more seconds. There we go. Almost done. I've had some tools like take quite a long time, so don't just just be patient. Um, Let's go for the decimation now. Okay, I'm gonna pause real quick and, and wait for this to finish. There we go. So I was able to bring it down to uh, almost a million active points, which is about two million polygons. I think still a little bit heavy, uh, but yeah, this is the guy that we're gonna be working on with retopology. So tomorrow we're probably gonna go back to the uh, lighthouse, and after that we'll continue with the retopology for this guy. So make sure to leave a like, make sure to comment, make sure to let us know that you guys are enjoying the series because that's what keeps us going and uh, that's what uh, keeps the content flowing. So thank you very much, guys. I'll see you back on the next one, and uh, that's it. Have a good week. Bye bye.